Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to make a very simple loan repayment schedule. If you have a mortgage, a car loan, a personal loan, or any other type of loan, this video will give you an approximation of what your repayments will look like. I'll be using Google Sheets, which is a simple to use and free spreadsheet provided through your Google account. If you have Microsoft Excel, this strategy will work just the same. If you like this video and want to see more just like it, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. So first, let's go to Google Sheets. You can do this by opening google.com and then using the options button at the top right of the screen. At the bottom right corner, hover over the plus sign and select the pencil. This loads up a fresh spreadsheet that we can work from. There are four pieces of information we need for a simple schedule. The loan amount, or the balance of the debt. The loan interest rate, which is expressed as a simple annual rate without compounding. The term of the loan in years. For example, a mortgage is likely to be anywhere from about 15 to 30 years generally. And finally, the number of installments there are in a year. Weekly would be 52, fortnightly 26, monthly 12, quarterly four, and so forth. For the sake of this example, let's assume you have a car loan of $50,000, an annual interest rate of 10%, a term of three years, and make repayments monthly. If we highlight these cells in yellow, we'll know for future reference that these were the inputs into our schedule. We can now write our first formula. For this, we'll be using the PMT formula. If we type installment, we can put the formula to the right of it. What we need to do is key the equal sign, then type PMT. Now we need to use a single bracket and a guide should pop up. This tells us what we'll be keying in here, just in case you get stuck. We start with our rate, which is the interest rate that we keyed into cell B2. Then we use a forward slash to divide this by the installments per year we defined in cell B4. This gives us the interest rate per installment, in this case a month. We then use a comma and need to define the number of installments over the term of the loan. To do this, we take the cell B3, which is the term of the loan in years, and multiply this by the installments per year we defined earlier. With three years of monthly payments, we'll make 36 payments over the life of the loan. Insert another comma. Now we need to input the present value. First we need to put a negative sign, then select the loan amount in cell B1. At the present time, the debt balance is $10,000. The fourth item we can define is the future value of the loan. If you have a balloon on this loan, you can include that here. If you don't have a balloon, you can simply use a value of zero. And with another comma, we can define when payments are made at the start of a period or the end. Generally for loans, it's at the end, so we use a value of zero. However, for a lease, you'd generally pay in advance, so we'd use a value of one here. If you're uncertain, consider whether your lender required your first installment when you took on the debt. If they didn't, it's likely paid in arrears and you'll use a value of zero here. If you close the bracket and hit the enter key, the installment calculation will now appear. For our loan, this came to $322.67. Using this calculator on the Westpac Bank website, you can see they get to the same value. If your bank provides a slightly different number, that isn't a worry. Sometimes there can be differences based on their calculation methodology. I made a video showing how this works in another video. In this video, we're keeping things simple so you'll get a rough idea of your repayments. Now let's create the schedule. In cell A9, type a zero. This represents the first day of your loan. In cell A10, use the equal sign and type sequence. Now use a bracket and multiply both cell B3 and B4, then close the bracket. You can now see that there is a sequential set of numbers that load downwards all the way up to 36, representing your installments over the life of the loan. Alternatively, you can simply type each of these in. Now let's write in our schedule columns. You can change the names or rearrange the columns however you wish. In cell A8, type installment. In cell B8, type balance. In cell C8, type principal. In cell D8, type principal. And in cell E8, type interest. Highlight these bold if you prefer. In cell B9, use the equal sign and select B1. This gives us our loan balance when the loan begins. Now go to cell C10, use the equal sign and select cell B6. Now use the F4 button on your keyboard. This locks the cell reference, so when we repeat the formula, it doesn't change the cell reference. To the far right is cell E10. Again, type the equal sign and type IPMT. We used the formula PMT earlier, which calculated the overall loan installment. The IPMT formula, however, is used to isolate only the interest component of the installment. Many of the same values are used in that formula as in the IPMT. So in the formula, now insert a bracket and input the rate. Here we need to select cell B2, this time using the F4 key to lock the cell, and B4, locking this also. Use a comma, then select cell A10, but make sure not to lock this one. We want the cell to move as we copy it down. Here we want the value of one, representing the first installment, but as we copy it, we want to reference subsequent ones. Use a comma, then multiply cells B3 and B4, ensuring to lock them as well. Using another comma, now input a minus sign and select cell B1, and then lock it. 
If you have a balloon, input that value here. Otherwise, just use a zero. And paying in arrears, use zero too, just as we did earlier. Close the brackets, and now we have the interest component of the first installment. If you are new to loans, when you make a repayment, it comprises both principal and interest. Principal is your repaying of the loan amount, in this case the $10,000, while interest is what the lender earns in exchange for offering you the money for three years. If principal plus interest is equal to the installment, then the installment less the interest component is equal to the principal installment. To calculate this, click on cell D10, use the equal sign, then click C10, the minus sign, and then select cell E10, then close the bracket. This is the amount you're paying the loan off with each installment. You'll notice that cell B10 is empty. Here you want to key in an equal sign, then B9, a minus sign, and then cell D10. As you can see, after you make one installment, your balance drops from $10,000 to 9,761. This is what we call paying off the loan. So now that we have our formulas created, let's drag those right to the bottom of the 36 installment rows. As you can see, in cell B45, we have a value of zero, which shows that we have fully paid the loan off in its entirety once the 36th installment has been made. If you have a loan with a balloon, however, that is the value that will appear here. As a second example, if we increased repayments to, say, weekly, this is how we'd do it. At the top of the page, select cell B4 and change it from a 12 to a 52. You'll see all of the values update and that's because we have formulas in place that load off of these different inputs. You'll also see the numbers on the left hand side of the page jump out to 156 or 52 weekly installments multiplied by three years. All we need to do here is copy our formulas down as the hard work has already been completed. In cell B165, again we see a zero balance. Simple right, there are a universe of combinations you can create here. Try with weekly payments, larger loan amounts, different terms, anything that you want to test. Try to use this for your mortgage, your car loan, a student loan, or a personal loan. This calculation will help you get your head around what a loan is, and perhaps even ways that you can pay it off quicker. If you want to take your knowledge in this video to the next level, I made a video in the past that shows how you can add additional payments into your calculator. If you plan on making additional lump sum installments, this could be a huge help. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. If you found it helpful, I'd love it if you left a comment down below with any suggestions for other videos I could make in the personal finance space. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.